You have spent time in Washington as well as on Wall Street. Take a look at what this divided Congress may and may not do. Uh, things like taxes, things like infrastructure, things like uh, deregulation, Obamacare. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think there's uh, plenty in this election for both the Democrats and the Republicans to speak positively about. Obviously, the win in the House for the Democrats and seven governorships and uh, strengthening their position in the Senate. Uh, historically, if you look back at uh, divided government, uh, it's been a positive for the markets. And historically, the period after midterms has been a positive to the markets. So I think what you're seeing this morning is a confluence of those two from 100,000 feet views. And, you know, I think for policy, it means uh, a lot less uh, is going to happen in the next two years than might otherwise have happened. So maybe gridlock with investigations, but are there any areas such as, for example, infrastructure? Some people talk about infrastructure, something that maybe the Republicans and the Democrats could see eye to eye on. Well, the big, de the big decision, quite honestly, I think the Democrats in the, in the House are going to have to make is do they want to help uh, pass uh, legislation that both they and the president uh, pass? Uh, Typically, uh, Congress, congressional groups make a decision. Are they going to legislate and help move the company, the country forward, even if it may help the president a little bit in his reelection in 2020? Or do they want to be investigative and obstructionist uh, and uh, basically accomplish not very much uh, in the next two years? And I think it remains to be seen how that shakes out. I would make the observation that many of the uh, new House members uh, are at least have backgrounds which would suggest they're going to Washington to get things done, uh, not to uh, obstruct. I like the optimism, Ralph. I really do. Uh, if you're a CEO, you got up this morning. Uh, did your life just get harder or easier? Um, I would say it hadn't changed a lot, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but. Uh, I think what what today does is uh, we had a result uh, in the elections. I think it's a fair assumption that whatever happens in Washington over the next two years, it's not going to have a dramatic effect on uh, our clients, you know, who are businesses uh, all over the world and in the United States, certainly, or on our uh, business. So the world's going to pivot back to uh, what's going on in the real economy. What's the Fed going to do? Uh, and then the exogenous things that can derail that, you know, a trade, uh, a, a real escalation of trade differences between the two largest economies in the world. Uh, Italy, which hasn't gotten a lot of attention, but is a real uh, potential threat to the euro uh, experiment. So let's talk about China for just a moment, because there is this Bloomberg New Economy Forum going on right now in Singapore. And overnight, Hank Paulson addressed this question, and he actually had some pretty cautionary words to say. Well, I would... We're just going to listen to him for a second. Oh, I now see the prospect of an economic iron curtain, one that throws up new walls on each side and unmakes the global economy as we have known it. So an economic iron curtain, that sounds pretty dramatic. Uh, and as a practical matter, it, does this election last night actually encourage President Trump, if anything, to be tough with the Chinese? Well, I'm not sure uh, President Trump is necessarily affected by those things. <laughs> I think uh, that if you look back historically, there are a lot of things that he hasn't had uh, long-term views on. This is actually one of them that he's had a pretty consistent and long-term view, and it's a view uh, by the way, that uh, is supported by a not insubstantial number of members of Congress uh, on both sides uh, of the aisle. So there are not many people in Washington who are going to stand up and say, go a little easier uh, on the Chinese. Uh, at the same time, I think he can't possibly not be cognizant of the effect uh, that this, uh, you know, that a true Iron Curtain or trade war would have on the real economy here, China, and around the world, and therefore on the markets. So what does that wind up meaning then for the world of M&A? Outbound M&A from China was like the hot topic like 18 months ago, two years ago. What, what, what do you see now? Well, there are two things going on right now. One is 
the obvious uncertainty, uh, and uncertainty is the enemy of M&A mm -hmm. uh, uh, activity, uh, and uncertainty about how uh, the real economy and the uh, regulatory environment involves, uh, evolves. The second thing uh, which has gotten less attention uh, is that uh, it, there's a huge amount of uncertainty as to how uh, both uh, Chinese regulators and uh, U.S. through the CFIUS process will react to uh, larger uh, cross-border M&A transactions. And obviously the canary in the coal mine for that was the Qualcomm uh, NXP uh, transaction. And you know it, it didn't get disapproved, <laughs> it just got filibustered. Uh, but uh, you know that has certainly caused people to think twice about uh, large transactions that might require a significant amount of regulatory approval in China.